In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys some of the main ways that you can get to high rounds on Black Ops Wanderers, ranging from quite slow and safe, to very difficult but fast and hectic. Before I get into it though, I want to let you guys know that I should be uploading videos 5 times each month at least, so pretty much once every week. I intend to do multiple different series including this one, so I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to start off with the low round strategies and on Black Ops 1 to Reese, there's really only one main strategy you're going to want to do, which is playing in the Thompson room, but before you go ahead and do this strategy, you'll want to get set up with the Wonderwolf, Raygun, Mustang and Sally's and Bouncing Betty's and make sure you keep the barrier at the top of the stairs in the Thompson room closed. Also, something else you want to keep in mind with all of these strategies is when you're playing in the Thompson room at any point during the game, you want to have one board on two barriers to prevent the zombies from jumping out of those barriers. These are the ones connected to the window outside of the Thompson room, which include this barrier in spawn and the barrier next to the main one. Now, some people play this strategy faster than others, but I'll be showing you how I ran it in the 50s in my round 200 game. So what I would do is wait for a few seconds at the start of the round until I see the zombies spawning in, and once they were, I would switch the trap on in order to kill the zombies spawning in the barrier outside of the Thompson room, and then shoot the waff at the zombies inside the Thompson room. Then once the trap is off, you then want to shoot the waff and try to kill about 10 zombies with each waff shot until the trap is ready to be switched on again and then you'll rinse and repeat. This is until you need a max ammo for your waff in which you would get the horde of zombies together either with a monkey or training and then shoot them with either the Mustang and Sally or the ray gun in order to try and get some drops. Now, something else to note is that during the earlier rounds, you can place down Bouncing Betty's in some corners of the Thompson room in order to try and kill the zombies to get drops when you run out of ammo completely in all your other weapons. While playing this strategy for the early rounds, you should be fine to play it without any crazy difficulty until about round 40 and maybe even to 50. High round players will generally camp it to 60 plus. However, if you're only looking to beat your personal best, playing here to 50 is completely fine, or if you have some real difficulty, you can probably get away with playing to 45, and then you can start running the trap strategy. The more you play, the easier it gets. These trap strategies are going to be the main strategies you're going to want to use in order to get round 100+, plus and even round 200. I'll be showing three main strategies here that are the most frequently used ones and a bonus strategy at the end for those who like simplicity. The first strategy I'd like to show is called KJ Strat, which uses two traps in order to kill the zombies. To start off the strategy, you'll stand in the Thompson room next to the trap waiting for the zombies to spawn in. Once they have, again, switch the trap on, kill the initial zombies in the Thompson room with the waff, and after this, wait for the trap to switch off, and then run out of the Thompson room and into the spawn room and begin shooting a couple mags of the Thompson at the zombies in order to make some points. After this, you want to run over to the trench gun trap and switch that on and then immediately run all the way up the stairs and across the bridge to double tap. This is because you want most of the zombies to spawn around that area. While you're in this area and the zombies are starting to spawn in, you want to place a couple boards on each of the barriers and kill any dogs that spawn up there. As the zombies start breaching the barriers, you can begin to slowly make your way to the drop down with the zombies behind you and then drop down. At this point, you can go either way back to the Thompson room. In my 200 game, I did the shorter way and it was fine for me. Something to note when you're making your way back to the first trap is if you kill any dogs around this time, be careful of late zombie spawns when you leave the Thompson room again, as these zombies can kind of pop up where you weren't expecting and potentially down you. This is why I just waited until I was in the Thompson room in order to kill the dogs. But anyway, once you're back to the Thompson room, switch the trap on the other side of the room and stay inside the Tommy room until the trap turns off. This next strategy, as with the name Triple Trap would suggest, utilizes three traps in order to kill the zombies instead of just two. However, although this strategy is faster than KJ, it's also quite a bit riskier. To start off the strategy, you do everything you do with KJ strat, 
all the way until you get across the bridge. Now, this time when the zombies are jumping over the barriers, you want to try and stall them as much as you can before you drop down. This is in order to try and kill all the zombies around at the same time, as once you've killed them all, you want to jump through the trap and make your way to the FG-42, and be sure to kill any dogs you see spawning with the ray gun before you jump through the trap. When you're at the FG-42, you'll see that the zombies can be a little bit spread out. And if this is the case, you'll want to try and stall them around the area by doing some cutbacks around by the FG-42 and shooting the zombies. This should allow enough time for the zombies to be more grouped together, so that when you bring them through the Tommy Trap, all the zombies die around the same time. And that's pretty much it for Triple Trap, though if you want a more in-depth guide, the world record holder Sluya has a great video on how to run the strategy, so I will leave his video in the description below. Trade Strat is by far one of the hardest strategies I've played in Zombies, so I can't recommend this strategy for any newer players just looking for a new PB unless you're just looking for a challenge or fun, because although this strategy is incredibly difficult, it's also very hectic with lots of different things to look out for and do, so for me, it just makes the strategy fun. Before I try and explain the strategy with how I'd run it, I want to point out I'm not very good at this strategy and there have been improvements made by Sluya that makes the strategy more efficient. So once again, if you want a more in-depth guide on how to run this strategy, a link to Sluya's guide will be in the description. You would begin this strategy with a Wonderwaff in the Tommy Room and switching the trap on whenever it's available and you will keep using the Waff until you run out of ammo with it. Once you're out of ammo, you will then go to the box location in order to try and get the WAF out the box. The way you trade at each box location is different, so I'll show some examples here of how I would trade at each location, but something to note before this is if you get a crossbow while trading at any point, be sure to pack a punch it as you can use this for safety or speed. The first location I trade at is the power box. As you make your way here, you want to run straight to the power trap and hit the box and then switch the trap on when the zombies get close. You want to be careful when the trap switches off though, as zombies will keep spawning from around this area. So as you're trading, you're going to be holding the zombies up. If you keep hitting the box and it hasn't moved and the trap is ready at power, you want to switch the trap on and bring the horde through and start hitting the box again. The next box location is the box by the MP40, and as you make your way over to this box location, you'd switch the second trap on as if you were running KJ strat, and then begin hitting the box at the top of the stairs by the teleporter. Now once you hit the box, you want to place a few boards on the barrier right next to the MP40, and then take the weapon up from the box. Hit the box again, and place another few boards on the barrier on the opposite side. This is to help you get a third hit on the box, however you can just do two if you want. After you do your two or three hits, you then want to teleport into spawn and wait at the top of the stairs by Tommy Trap before using the Tommy Trap and repeating the process until the box moves or until you get the waff. For the catwalk box location, you want to run things differently. So once the Tommy Trap has switched off, you want to make your way immediately to the Power Trap, switch it on, and then keep running up towards the Catwalk box. Hit the box, and then board the barrier at the top of the stairs. Hit the box a second time, and pick the weapon up, and then teleport back to spawn, waiting for the zombies around the Thompson Trap area. Repeat this again until you get the WAF or the box moves. After this, I had the Tommy Room box, and for this one, you want to hit the box 3 or 4 times while hoarding the zombies up in the room, and when the trap is ready to be turned on, bring the zombies out of the Tommy Room for a moment, and then switch the trap on and take them in in order to kill them, and begin to hit the box again. If you struggle to stay in the room, you can exit the room when the trap switches off and run KJ until you return to the Tommy box last two box locations now and this next one is one of the worst for trading the location is just above the tommy room box and it's in the corner by a barrier you would run traps as if you were running kj but instead of stopping at the bridge you make your way to the box hit the box and immediately board the barrier next to the box 
you can only really get two hits on this box without a crossbow. So after the two hits, go to the teleporter and teleport back to spawn and wait for the zombies before using the Tommy Trap. If you are using a crossbow, however, you can shoot a shot on the side of the wall down into Tommy Room and it will attract the zombies to go over there. Finally, the last location is by the trench gun. You'd play this once again as if you were running KJ, but instead you stop by the box location and begin hitting the box. You can very comfortably get two hits on the box here, however what you can do is hit the box a third time and make your way up the stairs, being careful to look out for any dog or zombie spawns coming from Juggernog, and look at what you got in the box through a crack in the wall at the top of the stairs to see if you need to throw a monkey or shoot a crossbow shot in order to get the waff or ray gun. Then make your way back to Tommy Room as if you were running KJ. This last strategy I wanted to talk about hasn't actually been used in any record games, but I wanted to talk about it due to its simplicity. The strategy is literally just Thompson Room only and consists of just getting the horde of zombies in the Thompson Room, taking them outside of the room and bringing them back in with the trap on in order to kill them. Although this strategy is very simple, it's also quite difficult because you'll need to make sure you don't loop too quickly because then you'll miss the trap and also late spawns from killing dogs in the room when the trap isn't on. But because of its simplicity, I'd say it's very easy to learn. I just wanted to add this strategy in there in case anybody was thinking of playing to insta-kill rounds or if anybody was going to play remix where the insta-kill rounds appear sooner. So most of you probably know by now that at round 163 you get something called insta-kill rounds where the zombie's health gets reset back to round 1 health. So this strategy is for those rounds. All the strategy consists of is using a Pap Thompson and shooting the three barriers the zombies can spawn in. And if you want to reduce the chance of being overrun while doing this strat, you can board up the barrier to the right of the Thompson and switch the trap on when it's ready. And also, for killing dogs, just shoot the Pap Tommy a few times into the dog and knife it and it should die. And that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to like and subscribe for more zombies content like this. Also, if you have a map that you want me to do for the next strategy showcase video, comment it down below. I'm not opposed to doing non-trial maps as well. Thanks again, and peace.